This week on Continuum TV, Seven Weeks in Asia continues with the third leg of this amazing summer mission. Follow the team as they head to Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia and encounter a spiritual heaviness they must break through in order to bear fruit in this Muslim majority nation. This is Continuum and we'll take you there. The Seven Weeks in Asia team will meet up with Victory Asia's national leaders in Malaysia to blitz Kuala Lumpur with the gospel and to encourage VCA Malaysia's workers on the field. The third leg of the Seven Weeks in Asia summer mission starts off shaky when the group's money bag is stolen en route from the Philippines to Malaysia. Well, we're somewhere in Malaysia. I'm not 100% sure where. We're trying to find a bank to get some money. We're in Kuala Lumpur right now, waiting for Nelson to bring us some money so we can take the train to church. Nelson James finally arrived with the money, and so we are going to take a train to point A, and then we're going to get off at point A and buy more tickets to go to point B, and then Nelson's going to meet us at point B. with Nelson. Uh, he came and just kind of told us what we we're going to be doing for the day. We we're handing out flyers or invitations for an event we're putting on tomorrow night. We had to go through a few of the cultural differences and like one of them being you can't give an invite to a Malay person simply because it's illegal to yeah. preach the gospel mm -hmm. to them and could get messy if they showed up at church and that was found out by the police. So we had to go through, okay, what does a Malay person look like as opposed to an Indian and a Chinese person, which is kind of a funny conversation, but we got that figured out. So we went out and we handed out invitations for three, four hours, I think. We were yeah. walking outside. I don't know how warm it is, but we were just walking and dripping sweat, mm. dripping sweat. So it was, it was a good first day in Malaysia, I think. Everybody had a good time and it's hard for a lot of the kids, um, like they haven't really experienced being in a country with a restriction like that before, so it's really tough. I mean, we went to this one college to hand out the flyers and probably 95% of the people we saw were all Malay. Mm -hmm. And we're just looking at them, not only can't we invite them to this event, but like they are in such bondage, like they, how are they going to hear the gospel, right? Yeah. It's so dangerous over here, so. And can you tell us what's happening behind us right now? Um, right now they're setting up for a V Rockers relaunch, which is their youth group. Uh, it's going to be a pretty big event tomorrow night and hopefully a lot of new people come out and got those flyers that we sent out today. You, you share a word today, right? And what, what the word specifically you share with these people? 
Um, I shared about trusting in the Lord and learning about His His will for us. And if you if you are willing to learn, He will teach you and show you. But you have to also trust in Him That's in true. order to want to learn. Mm -hmm. So. So today we are um, painting the church. The pastor um, had a special request for us, so we kind of got together, we sanded the walls, we scrubbed the walls clean, and then we've been painting them, and it's actually been really fun. We're getting a little messy, <laughs> but it turned out really well, and I, we're really liking the results. It looks great. So it is excited, it is nice to be able to bless our church, Victory Church in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia and be able to see the pastor doing what he's doing and something like this we can get our hand into it, you know, because we cross, uh, fly across Asia not just to be a tourist but we will be able to bring, bring a blessing to them too. So here we are in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. This is Ronald. We are here at the KLCC in the front of the Twin Tower and I'm with Matt. So Matt, how is the trip so far here in KL? Um, it's been really uh, interesting. A lot different than the Philippines, but really cool by its own right. Mm -hmm. And how's the food? How's the people? How's the culture and all this stuff? Um, the food is uh, quite the same, but also quite different. Like it's really spicy and stuff. And uh, spicy in a different way. And then the 
the other day on Sunday, Sunday evening at mm -hmm. the church, we had uh, uh, curry and we had to eat it with our hands. So that was kind of cool. And how's the people here? Is the people are cool here? Um, they're not quite as friendly as like the Philippines, mm -hmm. but uh, they're not like hostile, whatever. But it's kind of a real mix. Like mm -hmm. there's the Indians and then the Mal Malaysians and then the uh, uh, Chinese as well. So it's really, uh, it's really interesting. And in this area, there's also a fair number of white people we've seen. So it's a lot like Canada or the States in that way. So how's about, how about how about the Christian here in Malaysia? What do you think about the Christianity here in Malaysia? Are they growing in the Lord? Are they are just stagnant or what? No, they seem to be really growing and like really passionate and like they're going out and doing stuff. And so, yeah, it seems like once somebody gets saved here, they really get saved and they're on fire for God. And it's like uh, a real life changing because it's against the law for Malaysians to be converted to Christianity, so it, it's really good to see. Malaysia is a beautiful country. Um, we didn't really get to see a lot of it. We've just been in Kuala Lumpur, so it's all city that we've seen, but it's a, it's a really, I don't know, good experience to be in a different culture. It's cool to meet new people and learn different cultures. I like Malaysia. The people here love to worship, especially to sing and dance, and that's really exciting. They love God, the people that do know him and they're full of him and it's really exciting to get to know to know that there are actually people and it's not just a dry place there's actually places where it's full of life god spoke to me this week telling me to be strong don't give up it might be hard sometimes but just keep going for it reach your goal and eventually get there just don't give up be strong you have to be strong in god because the evil uh, have too many ways to to make you sick or tired or have like a lot of problem, but you have to be a strong in God. You really have to know who you are and be committed to your faith, especially in when you're placed in circumstances where your faith is challenged. And this was definitely a hard week. Uh, we could feel a lot of spiritual tension. But at the same time, it was a really good growing and learning experience where God taught a lot of us about strength and our faith and who we are as Christians. I'm a senior pastor from Ottawa, Canada. I have a son named Jacob. And of course, every dream of a pastor is that their son or daughter would rise up in their footsteps and enter into ministry. One thing I know is that I can't tell my son to enter into ministry. I just said, God, I put him in your hands. All of a sudden, one day, there were two ladies in our church that spoke to my son Jacob and said, Jacob, you should go to the seven weeks in Asia. He went upstairs just to think about it. And immediately, God turned him around and he said, I'll go. He spent seven weeks in Asia, transformed his life. Four different nations he visited in Asia. He came back a new man. He came back and announced to everybody that he wasn't going to go to college for business, but he wanted to go to Bible college. He wanted to get into ministry and work alongside of his dad. Wow, I was so amazed. If you have a son or a daughter, I say send them. If you are a teenager, come to Seven Weeks in Asia. It will change your life. In seven weeks in Asia, you will experience many new things. If you come to seven weeks in Asia, you will experience many things. You know, um, you get to work with the youth, minister uh, to them, and minister alongside with our ministry team, and God will do something inside of you. You know, you will get changed radically. And when you go back home, you'll be a new person.
join us in 7 Weeks in Asia, check us out online at 7weeksinasia.com and you can send your application today. Seven Weeks in Asia enters its fourth leg of ministry as the team arrives in Poipet, Cambodia to help missionary Harley Vogue launch his new English training center. Hi, I'm Terry Wharf and I'm here with Josh Jocelyn from Seven Weeks, and we have now arrived in Cambodia. We're very excited to be here. We traveled here by van this morning, and how was that trip? Um, well, it was better than traveling when we went to uh, the jungle in the Philippines. We had a little bit more space. It was about four or five hours drive, and so it was, it was good. So we got here, and um, we got we ended up. Harley and Macra joined us here, and so then they kind of directed us with getting a visa and going through immigration, and that went well. And then we went on a tutu, I believe it's called, and so it's like a motorcycle, and then it has like this part where you could like sit other people, and so it was quite interesting because the road is narrow and it's muddy and uneven, and it's quite the adventure. So. Yes, we were doing wheelies through the street. It was quite cute with all of us and two tuk tuks. Anyway, we did get to visit um, Harley's home and the setup he has there for Victory Churches in Cambodia. And they're doing an incredible job getting prepared. Tomorrow we do some painting at the school. And tonight, Harley has brought us where? We're at the church here in Cambodia. We're, it's a, kind of like a youth night. So we've had, we played uh, shuffle buns and we've had Heather shared her testimony. And right now, um, they're actually playing a, a, a game where they have to make a human chair and we've done a drama and that sort of thing. So we're just gonna hang out with the youth and get to know them. This is a new church that is beginning here in uh, Cambodia and Harley is just helping out um, to bring people into here. And with our team coming here, we're just hoping that more people will come in and join them. Um, all these people that have never been, they don't know Jesus, they haven't been to church. It's only been three weeks since they've actually started this youth outreach. So that's cool yeah. that we get to be a part of this. Yes, it's very exciting. Today we've been here ministering in the slums and so what have you seen here today Jacob? Uh, we've seen uh, a lot of children it's a lot it's very poor area uh, a lot of the houses are built out of just steel and just whatever materials they can really get their hands on we've seen uh, a lot of the children light up when uh, we've been playing with them and having fun with them and just teaching them some songs, so it's been great that way. What have the girls been doing here today with them? Uh, we've been doing some face painting just over there. Everyone likes Angry Birds and Butterflies, so they've been putting Angry Birds and Butterflies on every kid. <laughs> okay. They've just all been lining up, and uh, right now, uh, before we did some uh, a lot of songs, uh, so Father Abraham and uh, a banana song that we do. Mm -hmm. So it looks like they're pretty receptive to all the games and that. Oh yeah, these kids uh, just looking for someone that they can come to and just have fun and uh, you know be a kid. And we continue our journey in Victory, Cambodia. And today we ended up coming up to Siem Reap.
and we were able to visit a new ministry that we hadn't been to before. Do you want to tell us about that, Melody? Sure. Well, we went to go see Pastor Karen. She's been here for about two years now, and she started um, a ministry that they literally go into the brothels and they rescue girls from sex trafficking. And then they have a house uh, residency program, I guess, for the girls. So they take them out and um, they raise them up there. They give them hope. They give them Christ. There's a lot to say. There's house mothers um, who are there with the girls 24-7. The place, I guess, where they're staying is super secure. That's one of their um, policies is security for the girls, I guess, until they're old enough to move out. They hope that they can rehabilitate them within a year as well as their families. So they're not just working with the girls. They go home and they assess the family situation. It's super cool what they're doing. They make sure they can go back to a safe environment with a healthy parent. I think there's just two of them working yeah. here, Patrick and Pastor Karen, and it is super, super, super cool to see what they've done. And right now I think they have six girls in the shelter. The need here for a ministry like that is so huge. And I mean, like sex trafficking is so prevalent here. So I think the youngest we saw today was eight years old. Eight, yeah. She's yeah. eight years old and the oldest they had there was 15. She was at sewing school when we were there, but breaks your heart to see what these kids are living through and what they're having to um, go through so it's just awesome and it's it's so cool that they are actually training up the families as well and so the the kids are assessed even after they go into the home there's assessments that go on uh, we were not able to take footage of the uh, home where they, the facility that they have the girls in right now. It is very top security and no one is to know where it is. That's why it is hidden extremely well um, because we are protecting them totally. So that's why we're unable to uh, bring you that part. Angkor Wat houses the ruins of a once beautiful city, the capital of the ancient Khmer civilization, a vast empire whose capital city housed a million inhabitants. The ruins are a popular tourist destination, and the Seven Weeks team takes a day to take in the sights. So what have we been doing today, Matthew? Um, we got up and had breakfast, and then we went around and visited uh, three temples uh, around this area here. We spent uh, most of the morning so far visiting, walking around and looking at everything. So a lot of history here? Yeah, for sure. Like they talked, uh, the tour guide talked about how um, the Hindus and the Buddhists have been uh, fighting back and forth over the temples and like one guy would build it and then the other guy would come in and des destroy all the statues and whatever and convert it and everything else like that. So everywhere you go around here, all these rocks have got carvings on them of monkeys, of warriors, of elephants, and there's a lot of the history is depicted on the walls. As we walked around today, our guide was explaining to us, you know, all oh, this is where they're going to battle, and, and then different gates were used for different things. And what were some of the gates that we saw there today that we went in the one temple? We had to use different gates. How come? Yeah, the, the gate on the uh, east side was for the... Um for coming in and then the north one was like the victory gate so the, the king would come in that one and all the normal people come in the the east and the south one and then the west one I don't they didn't really like because of the like death or whatever because west symbolizes death over here. Yeah. In the background is uh, one of the biggest temples in this area the Angkor Wat there's tons of temples hundreds thousands of them here in Cambodia uh, and governments from around the world are trying to preserve this helping out aren't they? Yeah like the German ones the Germans are here right now, and uh, over at the other ones, there's Japanese and uh, a lot of Indian as well. Yeah, so Matt, what are we doing after we leave here? Uh, we're going to head back to Poi Pet and to Harley's place, and we're going to go to the English class, and they're going to ask us a whole bunch of questions about Canada and just uh, uh, use some of their English skills that they've picked up, and uh, yeah, just it should be really good. Okay, and then uh, tomorrow morning, where are we headed? Uh, we are headed back to Siracha, and then we're going to uh, just get ready and then on the train for the north for the jungle trip with Pastor Al.
but you got to be proud of our young people. Isn't that true? They have come from wherever they've grown up in, in their comfortable situation or whatever kind of situation, not all of them were that comfortable, but they've come into this challenge of seven weeks in Asia and taken on the challenge and fought the good fight of faith here. And we've watched them as they've come through the Philippines and now today through Malaysia and into Cambodia. Cambodia again is another very interesting place for us to minister. Uh, Cambodia is such a desperate place and of course you see that in the, in the pictures and so on. The people have such a, a desperation and, and an oppression that's left over from you know the Khmer Rouge Pol Pot regime and, and the, the great genocide that took place. There's such a hopelessness that's still resident. It's a residue, spiritual residue in the hearts of the nation of Cambodia. So we've got to break through here with the real light of the gospel and this is what Harley and Makar are doing with this new school as we've seen our seven week in Asia guys here help them kick off, launch off this new international school. We call it international because one thing about the Cambodian people is they have an idea, they have a mind that their help is gonna come from somewhere else. Their own people, their own generations, their ancestors have let them down generation after generation and the only place that they're looking these days is to someone else. So this again is another open door. God has put eternity in their hearts that when we come, they're ready and they're open to receive. The big challenge in Cambodia is re-educating the people to be disciplined in their thoughts, disciplined in their mind, because if there's a hope. See, you and I have a great hope, don't we? We're looking for something in the future. You're looking forward to something today, tomorrow, next week, the, the next month, next year. We always got a plan. We, we like to plan, but you think if you, if you strip all of that out of our lives, what's left? There's just this despondency, and that's what we need you to help us minister to in Cambodia, to pray for Harley and Makara and this new school. And, and uh, of course, the seven weeks in Asia, guys that we send in there every year and our missionaries go in yearly and we do conferences and so on. We really need a lot of prayer to break through into this nation, really a revelation from God to come into the hearts of Cambodian people that will get them to stand up really and understand who they are in Christ. The righteousness of Jesus will minister to them the same way as it does to you and I. And so I'm excited about that and the reason that we're here doing all this work to bring you these programs is to bring, bring you up to speed with your great commission destiny. All right, so God wants you to be involved in all of the things that are happening across the nations of Asia. And you can do that by connecting with us in prayer and become a financial partner, become a prayer partner, become a communicating partner and uh, really promote this. So if you've enjoyed this video, and particularly if you know of the other young people that need this seven weeks in Asia experience, you connect them with this video. Make sure that they see, uh, get to see it and so that they can come on board and uh, you know receive it in their hearts and come and visit us here. So you be blessed as you partner with us and let's see Cambodia, Malaysia, Philippines, the nations of Asia changed for Jesus. Next week on Continuum TV. The Seven Weeks in Asia team enters its final leg of ministry as they travel into the jungles of northern Thailand to preach the gospel to hill tribes scattered in these mountains. Join us next week for the conclusion of this exciting summer mission.